We thank you because every time you bring us to this meeting is to sharpen us as leaders so that we can become like fresh instruments in your hand. Is to shape us as leaders so that we can be the people you want us to be and be effective on the battlefield. Oh Lord, we are praying. The things we have received today help us to arise and go over our own journey. Amen. Joshua was told, arise, go over this Jordan. And thank God he went over that Jordan together with all his people. Oh Lord, we are praying. We also will go over this, our Jordan, and carry our people along in Jesus' name. Amen. We will carry the people into the promised inheritance in Jesus' name. Amen. COVID-19 or no COVID-19, we will lead people unto salvation. COVID-19 or no COVID-19, we are going to lead people into sanctification and Holy Ghost baptism. COVID-19 or no COVID-19, we are going to lead them into the best that God has for them. We will lead them into their divine inheritance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Because our time is gone, we we'll just go straight into the next message. We'll take the announcements after the meeting. And after the meeting, don't rush so that you can uh, be given the proper uh, announcement so that we can respond adequately. Let's just pray together as we take the second message. Heavenly Father, we just pray that as we go into this message, you will open our eyes of understanding once again. Oh Lord, show us the way Amen. to be effective in our lives and in the ministry. Amen. Thank you because we you've answered. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 We're looking at the second message, expansion and progress through proven strategy. Life and ministry, they are not meant to be stagnant, to be at a standstill. Progress and expansion, they are expected. However, progress and expansion, they are not automatic because we desire it does not mean it's going to happen. They are the results of implementing proven strategy. And I'm asking you this afternoon, what is your strategy for life and ministry? Are you on a hit and run trial and error kind of operation that produces very, very bad results. Do you possess proven strategy, empowering strategy, effective strategy that can take you to the place of destiny that God has for you? You need to ask yourself that question. Expansion and progress, they come through proven strategy. God told Joshua, go over this Jordan. But my brother, the question is, how are you going to go over Jordan? That's the strategy. And God gave that strategy to Joshua. Let the priests bear the Ark of the Covenant. Let them go in front. The moment they step into River Jordan, River Jordan will part. Let the people follow. No fears. Let the people go. They will pass through. He didn't only receive an assurance, he also had a strategy. Many times, many of us, we know what God wants us to do. God has given us our assurance. This is what he's going to do in our life. But how is he going to do it? We don't wait enough to receive the strategy. And because of that, many things are never done. We say, but God promised me. I don't know why it's not happening. You don't have a strategy. Expansion and progress, they come through proven strategy. 
Look at Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8, verse 2. God told Joshua, And thou shalt do to Ahai, and a king, as thou didst unto Jericho and a king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. God gave Joshua how to capture Ahai. God told him what to do. Lay an ambush. Do as if you are running away. The people will be drawn out of the city. Then let the people that, that are in ambush, let them rise up and take over the city. And that's all they did. They had a strategy. God told him, I will deliver Ahai and his king into your hand. That's a promise. But they had a strategy. And with that strategy, they won the victory. And then God told him exactly what you did to Jericho and our king. That's what you do to the Ahai and the king. With a little alteration in Jericho, they burnt everything to, you know, to ashes, including animals. God said, but in the case of Ahai, you are going to burn Ahai to ashes, but the animals and the stock and the spoil in Ahai, take it out for yourself. A little modification, but the same strategy. Take over the city, burn it, and get it. It's important. Strategies. So, number one, if we are going to expand and make progress, we must receive an empowering strategy. And that's the first point, receiving an empowering strategy. My brother, without strategy, you are going nowhere. My sister, without strategy, you are going nowhere. My brother, you are married. Without a strategy for your family, that family is going nowhere. You are the pastor of a local church. Without a strategy, that local church is going nowhere. Receive a strategy for expansion and progress for your life, for your family, for your children, for the local church, for the regional church, for the national church. Without strategy, you are going nowhere. God has given you an assurance you are going to be a winner. How are you going to be a winner? How are you going to get to that destination? That strategy. And we need it. You know, when the children of Israel got to the brink of the Canaan land, Jericho was the first frontier city that Israel fought in the land of Canaan. The outcome of that battle was very, very significant because it's going to have an impact on the remaining campaign. You know why? If Israel had been defeated in Jericho, many people would have been discouraged and demoralized. The passion to move on would have evaporated. The courage to confront the enemy would have fizzled out. And God knew that. God knew that taking over Jericho, winning the battle in Jericho, that was very significant. To send fear into the heart of the enemy, to tell them Israel has come to take over. So God knew that first battle must be won at all costs. And God gave Joshua the strategy to take over Jericho. Go around it once a day. Do it for six days. On the seventh day, rise early. Go around Jericho seven times. When you finish, the priests have been blowing all along, but let the priests now give a final blast of the trumpet. And let the people give a great shout. I will send my angels. They will uproot the walls. The walls will fall down flat. Let the people go straight in and take over the city. There was a strategy. God gave an assurance, but God gave him the strategy. And they took over. Because defeat at Jericho could demoralize and discourage the people. But success will go a long way to galvanize them to action. You know, that's even why when they came to AI, the people said, we don't need to fight the way we did at Jericho. We, we put in too much effort. This one is a small city. Just said about 3,000 soldiers, let them go and finish the job. 
there was confidence that they will win. They were so, they were so sure because the victory. You know, that's why many times also, every time you get, you know, you win a victory, it emboldens you for more victory. It encourages you and empowers you and galvanizes you for further action. It's important. Knowing this, God gave Joshua a strategy for taking over Jericho and what to do with Jericho. It was very significant. It was the first battle to fight. The outcome of it will determine what will happen in the remaining of the campaign, either discouragement or courage. But thank God they won the victory. They took over Jericho in a mighty way and that sent signals to all the enemies that these people, they've come here to take over. Mm. The success of projects we embark on depends on the strategy that we implement. Successful leaders in the Bible, they received specific strategies for the battles that they fought and won, and for the projects they accomplished. Moses received a strategy how they were going to get out of Egypt, let the people take land, let them kill, put on the doorpost. At midnight, I will strike. Egypt, Egypt's power will be broken. You will be able to go out. He implemented it. They went out. They got to the Red Sea, nowhere to go. God gave them another strategy. Let the people move forward. Lift up your rod or your staff. Divide the Red Sea. There will be a passage. The people will move. They moved. The enemy pursued them. God said, Moses, put your rod down. Let the, let the sea close up. The sea closed up. The enemy, they were washed to their death. Strategy. They were going to cross the river Jordan. God gave Joshua the strategy. Let the priest be in front. Let the people move. Give a gap between the priest and the people. Let them move. As soon as the priest step into the river Jordan, the river Jordan will, will, will depart. We will part, will part ways and then move. That was a strategy. Winning over Jericho, strategy. Winning in Ahai, strategy. Winning over, you know, Azor and all those ones. God gave them strategies every time. Do you see David? He went to fight the Philistines. He prayed, God, should I go? God says, go. Will you deliver the enemy to my hand? God said, I will deliver the enemy. He did. The second time when the enemy came, second Samuel chapter five, Lord, should I go? God said, this time, don't go. Why the first time go? The second time, don't go. Strategy. Then God said, but what you are going to do? You are going to, to, to fetch a compass around the enemy as if you are trying to run away. As if you are afraid, you don't want to face them in battle, but you are rounding up. God says, you wait for me. When you hear the rustling of the leaves on the trees, when you hear the sound of a going at the top of the, of the mulberry trees, you will know that that's the time to strike. Arise, strike. He had a strategy. Second Samuel chapter five, he won the victory. Many of us are fighting battles, no strategy. We're just fighting blind. Fighting, say this is how brother so and so did it. You know, we are fighting, but no, no concrete proving strategy. And that's why battles are being lost. And then we say, I don't know what God is doing. God is doing the right thing. You are not doing the right thing. You are fighting without a proving strategy. You need to receive an empowering strategy in order to win the battles of life. The way you cross the Red Sea may not be the way you are going to cross River Jordan, but receive an empowering strategy to be able to win that particular battle. And I pray the Lord himself, he will do it in Jesus' name in our life. Amen. Amen. That we receive empowering strategies for the divine assignments entrusted unto us. God has given you something to do as a pastor. Do you have an empowering strategy from God how to do it? Why is the church under you not growing? 
no empowering strategy. How is another pastor planting the church and the church will grow, the church eventually will split into two and before you know it, after over some years, from one person, it becomes a region strategy. And yet somebody else will be there over many years, the church remains only 10, there's no growth, say so we don't know, no strategy. Just doing hit and miss. Life is about strategy. Coca-Cola wants to take over the world. You think that they just take over the world like that? They have strategy to make sure that everybody drinks Coke in the world. Advertisement. They will pack, they will bring another Coke. They will pack a truck on the city center. Free, free trials. They are trying to hook you. Say, ah, this one is free, you take it, you drink. Another one is free, you take it, you drink. By tomorrow, you already have an appetite for it. When they now say, it's one euro a can, you will buy it. You think they are giving you free. It's a strategy. These guys have strategy for what they want to achieve and they are achieving it. Those are even people in the world. Not to now talk about the church. God is sending us on an assignment. We just pick up our bag, we are running. No strategy. And then we come back and say, God, it didn't work. How will it work? How will it work? You need to receive an empowering strategy in order to fulfill the assignment that God has given unto you. It is not a hit and miss. You think that Jesus didn't have an ass Jesus, in Mark chapter 1, he healed somebody. Then he went to go in the morning, he, he, he went to go and do quiet time. They said, all men are looking for you. Jesus said, I must go to the other towns also, because that's how, why I came. If I don't, these people will tie me down here. But I came for everybody. I must reach other cities. Jesus had a strategy. And he went from village to village, from city to city, from region to region. He reached them. There's a strategy. And we are followers of Jesus. What is your strategy, my brother? You are giving birth to children. Firstborn is a boy. Second one is a girl. Third one is a boy. Fourth one is a boy. Or maybe a girl. What strategy have you got for those children growing up? Where are they going to be in 10 years? I say, I just feed them, say, well, they will grow up, they will go to school, they will get there, my friend. They don't, they don't just get there because we want them to get there. They get there because we have a strategy of what to do to get them there. You want your child to be a doctor? There is a strategy to help that child to be a doctor. You want a child to be a lawyer? There is a strategy to help that child to be a lawyer. If no strategy is in place, those children will grow up. No skills, no employable skills, no education, dropouts in the educational system, and then we we'll say the devil. No, it's not the devil. You didn't have strategy. I pray that this message of today is going to galvanize us to action. Yeah. If you have never sat down to have a strategy for your family, today it will stimulate you to say, no, I must have a strategy for my family, strategy for my children. How are they going to make progress? How are they going to move from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, until they get to where, by the grace of God, I desire for them? Strategy must be in place. Receive that empowering strategy. Is the path to expansion and progress because when the strategy has been used and it's proven, there is something you can do. Number two, when you receive an empowering strategy and it's working, you can replicate that effective strategy. Don't just use it once. You can use it many times and it will produce results because it's a proven strategy. Look at this. Joshua chapter 8, let me show you. There was a way that Israel took over Jericho. Look at what God said. Joshua chapter 8, verse 2. And thou shalt do to Ahai and her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. If the strategy over Jericho was not effective, God will not say, 
do in Ahai the way you did it in Jericho. The Jericho strategy, it worked and got it. What you did to Jericho and Akin, repeat it. Do it to Ahai and Akin. Verse 28. Verse 28. Joshua chapter 8, verse 28. And Joshua burnt Ahai yeah. and made it an heap forever. forever. Even a desolation unto this day. Yeah. Is that not what was done to Jericho? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. He burnt Jericho forever and said nobody should rebuild Jericho. What he did to Jericho and the king, because he do to Ahai and the king. Look at chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10, verse 1. Now, it came to pass when Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ahai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king, mm -hmm. so he had done to Ahai and her king, mm -hmm. and how the inhabit the inhabitants of Gibeon, Gibeon had made uh, peace with Israel and were among them. Even the unbeliever said, Did you know how he dealt with Jericho? <laughs> that's exactly what he did to her. And that's what he's going to do to us. We are done for. Because it's a working strategy. You replicate it. Look at chapter 10, verse 28. Chapter 10, verse 28. The Bible says, And that day, Joshua took Makeda and smote it with the edge of the sword. And the king thereof, and not only destroyed them, and all the souls that were therein, he let nothing remain. And he did to the king of Makeda as he did unto the king of Jericho. So he didn't only use the strategy he used in Jericho only in Ahai. Here again, he used it. Verse 30. And the Lord delivered it also and the king thereof into the hand of Israel. And he smote it with the edge of the sword. And all the souls that were therein, he let not, none remain in it, but did unto the king thereof as he did unto the king of Jericho. That's another city. And that's what Joshua did. And when a strategy works, Replicate that strategy. It will accelerate your progress. Replicating an effective strategy. Did you see in Luke chapter 9? Jesus sent out 12 disciples, two by two. They went out. He told them, heal the sick, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. They went out. They were effective. Did you see that Jesus increased it? In Luke chapter 10, he took 70 other disciples, he divided them two by two. He sent them out also to go and do the same. And they came back. You know what they said? Even the demons were subject unto us through your name. Replicating an effective strategy. That's the way to expansion and progress. If a strategy has worked, replicate it. If it's a proven strategy, duplicate it. It will work. The strategy employed in Jericho worked very effectively. It became the yardstick to measure the success of other campaigns. God told Joshua several times to do to other cities as he had done to Jericho and her king. Do you know that Jericho, in fact, when Joshua was dealing with all the cities, let me show you, Joshua replicated the same strategy. Somebody says, how? Let's look at it. In Joshua chapter 10, I want to show you something. Joshua chapter 10. Go with me to verse 29. And I want you to follow, okay? Joshua chapter 10, verse 29. And that day, Joshua took Makeda. I want you to see, Makeda is a city. What did he do in that city? He smote the city with the edge of the sword. And what did he do? And the king thereof, 
he utterly destroyed them. And all the souls that were therein, he let none remain. And as, and as he did to the king, and he did to the king of Akeda, as he did unto the king of Jericho. Jericho. That's verse 29. Verse 31. And Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him unto Lachish and encamped against it and fought against it. So that's another city. He went against that city. He fought that city. What did he do to that city? Verse 32. And the Lord delivered Lachish into his hand, into the hand of Israel. We took it on the second day and smote it with the edge of the sword. Did you see that? Yes, sir. In Makeda, smote Makeda with the edge of the sword. And all the souls that were therein, according to all that he had done to Libna, he did to Jericho, he did to Makeda. What he did to Makeda, he did in Libna. What he did in Libna, he did in Lakish. What he did in Lakish, you know, and just continue like that, replicating exactly the same thing. Look at verse 4. And from Lachish, Joshua passed unto Eglon and all Israel with him. And they encamped against it and fought against it, encamping against it, fighting against it. Verse 35. And they took it on the top on that day and smote it with the edge of the sword. Do you see that language? Smote it with the edge of the sword. And all the souls that were therein, total wipe out, he utterly destroyed. And that day, according to all that he had done to Lachish, the strategy that worked in Lachish, he repeated it in Eglon. Verse 37. And they took it. That's Eglon. Now let's 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 read the verse 38. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him to Deba, that's another city, and fought against it. And he took it and the king thereof, and all the cities thereof, and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and not only destroyed all the souls that were therein, he left none remaining, as he had done to Hebron. So he did to Deba and to the king thereof, as he had done also to Libna and to Akim. Can you see Joshua? The way he took city after city, it was the same strategy. Encamp against it, fight it, take it over, slay with the edge of the sword, wipe out everybody, and eventually you take over that city. And he went on, city after city, city after city, city after city, same strategy, replicated. Took over Eglon, took over Makeda, took over Libna, took over Deba, took over Lakish. All same strategy. When you have a proven strategy, when you have a working strategy, when you have an effective strategy, my brother, replicate it. It will bring you results. This is scripture. So you find what Joshua did. Joshua replicated the same effective strategy as he fought city after city. What was the strategy? Number one, fight against the city and take it. And camp against it, fight it and take it. Number two, smite the city with the edge of the sword. Number three, utterly destroy and, total, and totally wipe out all the inhabitants thereof. And it was what he did, city after city, from Makeda to Libna to Lakish to Deba to Eglon, city after city, same strategy. You know, many of us will use one strategy and it's effective, then we throw it away, then we're looking for another strategy. Yes, there's nothing bad about looking for a new strategy, but if you already have a strategy that works, still continue to use it, it will be bringing you results and it will make your journey to be very, to be very fast. This, you know, replicating an effective strategy produces fast and proven results. Because this strategy is known to work. And when you replicate it, you get results faster. This is what business people do when they are opening more outlets. When, when McDonald's open another outlet, have you realized that the 
The way McDonald's always does all their McDonald's shops is the same. Have you noticed? Yes, sir. Have you noticed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They have a master plan. Once they want to establish somewhere, they know what to do. They are not looking for what works or what they know what works. They just the same furniture, the same layout, and everything. They just replicate it. Have you seen that the McDonald's you eat in Milan is different from the McDonald's you eat in Rome? No, he said they just replicate it. Burger is burger anywhere you go. Do you understand? Yes. They just replicate it, and it's very fast because they already have the recipe. They already have the architecture. They just go there, renovate, bam, they start. The system they use is the same. They just replicate it. That's what business people do. They replicate a winning strategy. The store format, they replicate. The merchandise, the burgers they are selling, the chips, you know, everything is same. You know, whether it's ketchup or mayonnaise or whatever, it's the same package. They just replicate it from place to place. The business model, they replicate. This is what they do. And that's why things are working. This is what serial entrepreneurs, they do. You know, some people, they start one company. When that company succeeds, they put some people to run that business. They start a different company. But if you go and study them, it's the same method that they use. It may be a different, you know, here may be, here may be a, a, a burger, burger shop. That may be a clothing shop. But the strategy, the business model, even though there are two different businesses, is the same because it's the same serial entrepreneur. He, he knows what works and he will implement the same, even though the products may be different, but it's the same strategy he's going to use. And that's how they create different companies, many companies over and over, replicating effective strategies. No, they replicate a winning model, times without number. This is what they don't do in franchising. This is why if you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's the same everywhere. If you go to McDonald's, it's the same everywhere. If you go to Burger King, it's the same everywhere. They just replicate a strategy that is working. That's about franchising. And this is a good model also for expansion and church planting. Joshua has shown us that if you replicate an effective strategy, you get the same results from city to city, from city to city. Do you know that Joshua used it to take over more than 30 cities? Same method. Just replicate it. It already works. Replicate it. Just move on. Expansion and progress. From having no city to having 31 cities. Israel, you know, they just, from king to king, once they take over this city and the king, and, and then they move to the next one. The next one, what they did here, they're going to replicate there. Then they take over that one. Once that one is in their pocket, they move to the next one. They replicate the same strategy. And, City after city, after city, after city, after city, they took all over. You can read Joshua chapter 10, Joshua chapter 11, Joshua chapter 12, they took over city after city, replicating the same strategy. My brother, there are some things you do in your life that is bringing you results. Why don't you do more of it? Why don't you replicate that strategy? There are things that you have put your hand on and you can see that, why don't you replicate that strategy? As a pastor, you know, Maybe, maybe some of you didn't listen. When they launched the, uh, the book of our general superintendent, Kumuyi, Defender of the Faith, and the GS was giving a talk, you know what he said? He said he has found out that speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. He said he found that his he has worked in his life. So because of that, he has replicated it and he's working. He didn't condemn anointing with oil. We well, said, I found this to be very effective. So I've done more of it. I've replicated it. And everywhere I go, I speak the word only and everything, demons run out. People are healed. The lame walk, you know, the blind see. And he didn't go for anointing oil. He didn't go for laying on of hands. But you know, some other pastors, 
maybe they use anointing oil once, they've used it twice, and they see that any time they anoint somebody and, you know, it works, then it becomes their pattern. They replicate it. And all their life is anointing with oil. Somebody has cancer, anoint with oil. Somebody has headache, anoint with oil. Somebody's nose is, is running. We put anointing oil in his nose. You know, he's just replicating a strategy that has worked for him. For some other people, it's laying on of hands. If a strategy you have found it to work, replicate it, it will work. I'm sure that if you go back and listen to that message of the GS when they launched the book, if you listen very well, you will hear that. I'm sure some people will hear it, but they don't understand. But from tonight's message, from this evening's message, you are understanding. Man. He has found a, a strategy that worked and worked effectively, and he has replicated it times without number. And did you see that every global crusade, as he goes from place to place, what does he do? Speak the word only. He doesn't lay hands on anybody. He doesn't anoint, and miracles are happening. And the one that is going to happen in Jalingo, what is he going to do? Speak the word only. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Wonders are happening. That's our Father in the Lord, replicating the strategy that he has seen to work, to work wonders and work effectively. And he has capitalized on it and is using it massively and is producing results. My brother, if a strategy is working, replicate it. It will bring you results, fast results, proven results. You can see Joshua. One method worked, God told him what you did in Jericho that was effective, do it in Ahai. What he did in Ahai, do it over here. What you did to Jericho and Akin, do to this and this. And Joshua replicated all that. He replicated that strategy several times over. And he took over city after city, after city, after city, after city. Tonight or this evening, I don't know what else to say, but you can look at your life. What is the strategy that you have found working in your life? Replicate it. It will bring you results. And I pray that the Lord himself, he will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Did you see the case of, of uh, David? David said, a lion came with catapult. I eliminated it. A bear came with catapult. I eliminated it. So now I said, let me put another armor. He said, I've not tried this one. I don't know about this one. I know about this catapult and this stone. I know how it works. I killed the lion with it. I killed the bear with it. This was a concern to this thing. I will kill him with it. Did he kill him? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, replicating an effective strategy. He replicated that same strategy and it worked. And the strategy that God gives you as to replicate it, it will work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah got to River Jordan. He's going to cross over. He took his mantle, wrapped it together, raised it up. He smote River Jordan. River Jordan parted. Elijah and Elisha, they moved over. When Elijah was coming back, what did he do? Elijah said, I saw what Elijah did. <laughs> that method was very effective. He believed God, he raised up his mantle, he smote the waters, the waters parted, I can do the same. Elijah said, God of Elijah, the way you manifested yourself for Elijah, manifest yourself for me, he raised up that mantle, he smote the water, bah! If I don't have parted, the Bible says Elisha went over. You are going over. Amen. Amen. You are going over. Amen. As you replicate effective strategies, they will work in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We need to understand that. You remember Judges? Gideon said, look on me. When I break the picture, you break the picture. When I, you know, say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, you say the same thing. That's how they won the victory. When the strategy is effective, if you replicate it, you will get the same results that they got. And I'm praying that as we take this on board, as God will be giving you effective strategies for your life, don't just use it once. 
Replicate it several times. It will produce multiplied success. It will produce multiplied accomplishments. You know, if you use it only once, it gives you only one result. But if you use the same strategy several times, it can produce 20, 30, 40 results. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the only strategy. God will be giving you new strategies from time to time. But any one that is effective, don't just use it as a as a kind of a one-off and discard it. Repeat it many times. You know, it will give you many results. Replicating an effective strategy. If the people in the world don't do this, ah, we should do it. We see it in the Bible. We should do it. And I pray that the Lord is there will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's good for church planting. And if we repeat, if we do it, oh, our churches will multiply. Amen. If you have planted a church and you saw what happened, how did you reach the people? How did you find the place of worship? How did you organize? How did you do everything and everything is smooth? If you if you are somebody observant and you are noting it down, the next time you want to plant a church, if you take all the effective things that have worked here and you implement it in the new place you want to plant, it will work. It's replicating effective strategies. It will work. And last point, result from an elevating strategy. You know what Paul said? Paul told Timothy, ordain elders in every city as I have ordained you. What is he saying? Ordaining you has brought results in that city. If you replicate that strategy, you will get the same result. So ordain elders in every city as I have ordained you. That's replicating an effective strategy. <laughs> if you read the Bible very well, you will see this times and time, time and time again. You will see it many times. And we have shortchanged ourselves because God has given us some strategies that work, but we only use it once and discard it, and we get few results. But we can use the same thing several times, over and over, and get massive results. The churches I planted is the same strategy. The same strategy. Because it works. You just replicate it. And you plant churches. And it will move on. And the churches, churches will grow. I pray you will take this on board. Replicating an effective strategy. What happens if you have an empowering strategy? If you have an effective strategy? If you work and you use it, the result is that that strategy will elevate you. You will get results from an elevating strategy. Joshua captured city after city using the same strategy. The cities that were very resistant, if you read it, those that were very resistant, he burnt with fire. The ones that surrendered and they didn't fight, he still eliminated the people, but he didn't burn those cities. They took the spoil of the cities. They look at it in Joshua chapter 11, verses 12 to 14. You know, little modifications from place to place, but the same strategy. Just little variations. Joshua chapter 11, verse 12. It says, and all the cities of those kings, and all the kings of them, the Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. But as for the cities that stood still, that is, that they didn't offer too much resistance, that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save as of only that the Joshua born. And all the spoil of these cities and the cattle and the, the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves. But every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them. Neither left they any to breathe. Total elimination, total alienation. But the cities that were very resistant, apart from conquering those cities, they burned them to ashes. But the ones that didn't resist that, they, they still eliminated the people, but they took those cities, they took the spoil and go. Little variation, but same strategy. Same strategy. And Joshua took, look at chapter 11, verse 18. 
chapter 11, verse 18. The Bible says, and Joshua, and Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. He made war. And not only that, he took over. And Joshua took all that land, the hills and the south country, and the land of Goshen, and the valley, and the plains, and the mountains of Israel, and the valley thereof. Joshua took over all. He took over all. Now, the, the above us and the following, they highlight the results of elevating strategy Joshua used in conquering. And I pray that the same results we will obtain in Jesus' name. Amen. Elevating effective strategies will always result in elevation and progress. Very important. High way are created through jungles. Assets are acquired. They took over spoil. Victory is secured. They conquered cities. They conquered kings. Tangible progress is experienced. Enemies are eliminated. That's what happens. Results from an elevating strategy. My brethren, strategy, very important. Very, very important. Many of us don't pay attention to that. We are working and working and working. My brother, it's good to work if you have 10 hours to work. Five hours may be sufficient to get the same results that others will get in 10 hours. You use five hours to think strategy, strategy that effective. You will work less, but you will, you will achieve more because you have a strategy that is effective. Other people that are working with that effective strategy, they are just burning energy, you know, just expending labor and the results will be few. We need to work with strategy. And you know, in this church, by the grace of God, that's what we are trying to do. Some brethren don't understand us. Think about it. You know, when we were buying building after building, we were not innovating. We were not innovating. We were buying the building. Brethren are saying, Pastor, it's good for, let's buy one and then renovate that one and let's make it good before we go to another one. They didn't understand. We are trying to buy buildings when it's cheap. By the time you buy this one, you renovate it, and you have spent all your money. Some years have gone. By the time you come to the next one, the price is so much, you can't, you can't do much. Your progress will be limited. But we buy this one, we manage it the way we, we did. The little money we have, we buy the next one, and we buy the next one, and we buy the next one. Later, we can now settle down and be renovating. We've been able to get a lot of assets cheap because we bought before the prices were right. And we are implementing strategy. And some people don't understand, saying, Pastor, he's always buying, buying, buying. He's never tired. And, you know, they, they just criticize you or whatever. My brother, maybe you don't understand what we are doing. Maybe you don't understand that we have a proven strategy. Maybe you don't understand. When I was in Manchester, Manchester was the first choice to buy building in, 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 uh, in, in, in England. We bought a second one. And those are the only two buildings that Manchester still has up till today. I've lived there 25 years. Liverpool, we bought a property in Liverpool and we bought another one and we bought another one. Ahead of many, many other deeper life churches in England, there was a strategy. And those strategies have helped those regions today. They are using buildings, they have money, they have this. If I didn't do that, they would be struggling like maybe some other regions as well. The strategy works, my brother. And I came here and I'm implementing the same strategy as some people are. You know, the other time we came to Casa Maggiore, let me give you, let me give you some. This is not a good news. Before COVID-19, there were eight churches in Casa Maggiore. Today, there are only three churches in Casa Maggiore. Five are folded up. You know why? Some of them are using common property. Common said because of COVID-19, we cannot open our doors anymore. They have to shut down. Some others are renting. Landlord say, we are sorry, COVID-19, we cannot, and they cannot get anywhere to rent. 
Those churches have to shut up. They have to shut down. That's the end. But we can say majority. Who can shut us down? He's our own. Amen. 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 Already ahead of the curve. You know, another church also that is existing in Casa Majore, they also own their own church, Temple of Light. They own their own church. The third one, I don't know. So the three of us surviving. Deeper Life, we have a church. The other one, they bought their own church as well. All the others that didn't have their church are wiped out. These strategies are working. Brother, my sister, what you need is to support the leadership. I mean, go along with us. Even when you don't understand it fully, you will understand here by, by and by. We are doing a work that is, we are implementing strategy. The strategy works. The things we are doing in your region, it works. You know, we came here, we started buying buses here and there. Today we have about 30 buses, all paid for. And now we can bring brethren to church and go. Couldn't other churches do it? Yes, they could, but they don't have that strategy. They, maybe the other things they want to do. The strategy we are implementing works. Join us, help us. I mean, cooperate with us. You know, let's join us together to move this church to where they ought to be. Educating our children. Oh, it's part of the strategy. When I came here, I will see children. This one is 16 years old. What are you doing? Say, I did work for Fabrica. <sighs> you will see that one, 15 year old. What are you doing? Say, I don't finish uh, scholar media. So, are you going to school? No, 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 no. I did work for Fabrica. That's one of the things why we established the Mayor's Christian School, that these are young, young minds that could be educated, earning good money, wasting their potential in Fabrica. Hmm. Let me tell you, we have students that have finished in the Miles Christian School. There is one in London today, he's earning about 70,000 pounds a year. There are others that are earning 40, 50,000 pounds. You are not going to earn that in the factory. But these were children that would have ended in the fabric, they had the brain. Mouse Christian School is part of strategy to make sure that our children will not be slaves to the European system. Yeah. But some people didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. We have strategies to move the church forward, to move the family forward, to move our children forward. What we need is to rally around. You see how Israel did the rally around, the strategies that God gave Joshua, and city after city, city after city, city after city, city after city, implemented the same strategy, and they conquered. I pray that you will be part of the team, supporting yeah. us, implementing yeah. the strategy we have, replicating it from region to region, region to region, region to region. We bought Vimakate, one in Lobadia one. We bought uh, Rodigo, one in Lombardia, two. We bought Casa Maggiore, one in Emilia Romagna. We, you know, we are trying to replicate that. We bought a small place also in Piemonte, in Torino, but we still buy more. But one, 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 one for each region so that we can use that one as a leverage to be able to move on to better things. Support us. This strategy works. Let's rise up and pray and tell the Lord that the Lord will help us. Expansion and progress. Proven strategy. It works, my brother. It works, my sister. Expansion and progress. Proven strategy. It works. It works. It works. It works. it works. Let the Lord help you today. Expansion and progress through proven strategy. The strategy works. Yes, what we have done in Jericho, we can replicate it in here. We can replicate it in Makeda. We can replicate it in other places. The strategy works. The strategy works. The strategy works. Receive an empowering strategy, replicate an effective strategy, results from an elevating strategy. The Lord Himself will help. The strategy works.